Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be talking about thinking big. And what thinking big really means is your ability to look around corners. Uh, thinking big is, well, hopefully not thinking small. Thinking small ends up being a self-fulfilling prophecy. And it's only those leaders, especially product leaders, uh, who can think big and really envision a world in which uh, this, the solution, the software, the product, the widget doesn't yet exist and it's going to change people's lives. And, and in fact, it's probably at a point in time where those people, your target customers, don't even know that they uh, either need that product or service or even have the need that would be fulfilled by that product or service. And this is a, a unique interview that I really enjoy doing because this is a, a, just a fantastic candidate uh, who's going to demonstrate uh, what a, uh, like a really senior VP level, uh, big thinker, uh, how they answer and address questions in an interview setting, how they talk about their experiences, the, the type of communication. It's, just, it's a great set of answers all around. And in this specific one around Think Big, uh, I, I run a press on uh, reimagining uh, what has been a, a, a longstanding um, I guess the word I'm looking for is a long-standing process that people got used to and, and was trying to move it into an offline, excuse me, online space. Uh, and the target customer was most likely to be resistant to it because of a, a technophobia, age issues, and a bunch of other things. So a fascinating discussion, uh, and I hope you enjoy it. The candidate we're talking today is looking for a VP of product management, VP product, chief product officer type role, depending on the size of the company. Pretty impressive run with this candidate. Uh, started out at Microsoft about 20 years ago, straight out of college with a CS degree progressed through the ranks through their own startup, which they sold and exited a variety of roles, head of product, VP product, that sort of thing, uh, is looking to make a transition from a hor uh, sorry, a vertical software role. Uh, think of this as a vertical specific software, uh, healthcare services software, or uh, something that would pertain to uh, the oil and gas industry. Uh, and moving back to horizontal software, think of this as like search technology or marketplace technology or e-commerce enablers, uh, things of that nature. And wants to make that switch and was looking to uh, start interviewing again and gave us a call. Uh, this first question is meant to probe you a bit uh, on your most recent job. I, I specifically want you to limit it to, uh, to um, the idea of redesigning the pharmacy experience. That's a big idea, right? And I'd specifically like you to walk me through, and, and this, it's interesting that you gave me the feedback about their moving in your direction. So this, this is kind of, I, I script the whole interview ahead of time. So that's why I'm reading that question. Um, I'd like you to walk me through the, the most complex design issues you face with not specific user interface design issues, but rather the customer interaction model, the delivery and fulfillment pipeline, or anything else that was a radical reimagining of how things have been done. Yeah, so, uh, so, so the most complex thing that we have had to do at is um, take a transaction that for the vast majority of, of Americans who purchase medication uh, is typically done in store. The vast majority of people when they're, when they're buying medication are, are going to a local pharmacy yep. um, or are going to um, a, a big chain pharmacy like a CVS or Walgreens. So their doctor is sending them a script, uh, to, sending a script to the pharmacy, they're showing up and they're paying with their credit card. Um, the vast majority of pharmacy transactions happen that way today. Um, what we are aiming to do is to say, hey, you don't have to go into a, uh, a physical store anymore. Um, when your doctor sends a, a prescription to um, which is what we are, um, you can check out online 100%. You can purchase your medication online and have it home delivered to you. Um, or you can call in once you are notified that we have your prescription and complete a transaction over the phone. Yep. So the most challenging thing that we have to do is we have to be able to um, meet the customer where they want to be. Yep. Right? Meeting, there are going to be certain customers who are going to say, oh, great, I'm very familiar with transacting online. This is awesome. Why didn't somebody think of this before? But there are going to be customers who are going to say, wait a second, like, I want to talk to a person. I want to chat. I want to, um, I want to maybe email them or I want to call them and speak to them. So really building an end-to-end -end user experience, both in the experience itself and even other touch points throughout the patient journey that ensures that when a patient comes to which is not a physical retail pharmacy, that they can have the experience that they need given where they're at. And, and what they desire. And so as a, as a, as a meta construct, meeting the customer where they are and what they want, that's the, I, I get that. But how did you address, let, let me just ask you something. How did you address that specific problem? How did you prioritize sure. uh, that? Um, how or why? Uh, first, how? So how do we prioritize it? Sure. So we prioritize it through a few means. We, we prioritize it both um, in our application directly when a patient is 
so, so here's the way our application works, just to actually make sure yeah. that that's clear, is when a prescription comes to once it is ready for you to purchase, you will get a text message to say, hey, Brandon, um, you are ready, uh, your, your medication is ready for purchase. And then that will take you through a series of steps where you will authenticate yourself. We will validate that you are indeed Brandon. Um, and then we will show your price. And then we will ask you um, what address we should deliver the medication to. So that's our application. So yep. how do we address it? We address it in two ways. So first, we thought of things outside of that experience, which is even before you get that text message, we actually have a call center, like what we call a hub, that will reach out to, to Brandon and say, hey, Brandon, this is Aton calling from um, we received your medication, uh, and if you have any questions, happy to answer them. And actually, at that point, they can introduce themselves to the patient, you know, has, has probably yep. heard it from their doctor, but that's one way we, in terms of how we address it. The but, second but, way, well, in terms of the customer journey, for it to have gotten to they would have had to have known who you were. So how did they get to they didn't know who you were? Right. Well, it's very possible that they were introduced to by their doctor, by their provider. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so their doctor might have told them that and they got some bits and pieces of it, but they don't know the full story. They're like, okay, great. That sounds reasonable. And, oh, they do home delivery. Oh, I, I need home delivery right now. I don't feel comfortable going into a pharmacy um, at this point in time. Yeah. The COVID. Um, so that's how we address it. The, 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 that's the first way we address it outside the patient, outside of the application. The second way inside of the application that we address it is we just have, I mean, it's fairly straightforward. Well, actually, I'd say two ways now. We, so first, we have a very clear, you know, call us, chat with us throughout the experience. Every single screen, it's very clear. Um, it's, it's ever present in the experience. So people at any time can kind of hit the escape valve and call our chat. The third way we, we, we address it is that in the application, we spend a lot of time working on our copywriting on communicating um, pharmacy concepts in like short, simple ways. Cause there's a lot of different things or exceptions that can happen. And so we work to explain to the patient along the way, exactly why are they seeing the product that they are seeing? We might explain to them, Hey, we couldn't find your insurance. Call us um, to, cause we have automated insurance lookup, but we might not be able to find it. Call us to give us your insurance. So those are the ways we, we ensure that we're, we're meeting the patient where they might be, whether that's they feel more comfortable having that phone call or they feel totally comfortable transacting online, but they need some guidance and pointers along the way. So how do you, by the way, that was a, a very great and informative answer, well-structured, thank you. Um, how do you measure the efficacy of those in-app efforts that you just outlined? Yeah, so we, so we met, so it's a good call. So, so we, we do a couple of things to measure them. So first off, we look at, um, so we, we, at the highest level, we measure overall patient conversion, right? So we're looking at the entire journey and we're saying, okay, well, of all the scripts that we receive, what percentage of the patients convert? So we, we understand that and we understand what channels they're converting through. Are they converting on the phone? Are they converting in the app? Or, um, the second thing that we do is we look at our support channels. So we look at when people call, call into support or they chat with us, um, what is... Um, um, of those people who call in or chat with us, what percentage of those people are A, based on the readouts that we have from support getting the help they need, and B, um, um, at what rate are they converting, right? So that, that, that's yeah. a clear signal to us. If, if people are getting support and converting at very high rates, equal, you know, to, at, at high, we, we have a, a internal OKRs that we have, that gives us the confidence that they're getting the answers they need and they're converting at high rates. So Sense. that's... Uh, that makes sense. And, and just, just for curiosity's sakes, and if you can't, if you can't answer the question because of the specificity or anything else, I understand. Don't, be, don't ever be afraid in this interview to say, uh, you know, proprietary information, I can't share. Um, help, help, just give me a sense of conversion rates and how that's trended over time. Yeah, sure. So, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll share with you um, a couple things. So one is industry-wide about half of medication that is sent to is never purchased. Yep. So you can think of like a typical pharmacy conversion that's out there in the wild is probably about 50%, maybe a tad bit higher. Um, so right around there. So um, we have, um, ours has always been meaningfully higher than that um, and has actually, as we have improved the patient journey along the way, has actually trended higher. Um, so meaning from where we started, we have improved conversion from that, from those already higher levels. I, I can't share the specific numbers, uh, but, but we have used our telemetry. We've used the data that we have 
in terms of how patients are engaging to drive conversion higher. What, just what a great answer. There, there's so much to love here, uh, but I'm going to focus on, on three things uh, that really stood out for me as far as what a, what a high level operating VP, product management, VP products, chief product officer uh, can do as an effective leader uh, and, and how it's on display for you that you can learn from. Uh, the first thing was there wasn't a satisfaction with simply defining the complexity of taking the pharmacy prescription process to online as the complex thing. That's complex, don't get me wrong. It's very challenging. Uh, there's a, if you've ever operated with or worked with people who have to use pharmacy software, it's, it's not easy. Uh, and there's a lot of complexity to the process. Um, the really interesting thing here was it, it, that was kind of the backdrop for the discussion around the complexity of the design. And the complexity of design that the candidate focused on was talking about meeting their customer where they expected to be met. Uh, and, and greeting them with a process that aligned with how they expected the process to work. Instead of trying to bend the will of a customer to a new process, especially customers, you know, let's be, be clear, I think probably the large majority of prescription drugs are, are well, a, a good portion of prescription drugs are going to be fulfilled by folks that are, we'll call them older and maybe a bit more technophobic, tech not aware, tech not forward, they're not Web 2.0, 3.0, whatever. Uh, and so it's going to be a challenge to get them to be early adopters for this truly complex process that's going online. And so recognizing that and recognizing that the, the, not only did the design have to match uh, and take this whole thing online, but it had to match and meet the customer expectations and where they need to be in the marketplace. So that's, it's, a, it's a subtle thing, but it's just so critically important about uh, demonstrating one's ability to think big. Um, but a little bit later, as we were talking about how, how they were interacting with customers, there was an insertion of some language uh, that, that the customer used. I just want to check my notes here. It was um, in very simple terms. Uh, when talking about the the language that they were putting up on the website that that one phrase in very simple terms it's only a couple words but it clearly demonstrates customer obsession which is which is a nice uh other leadership principle that you can pull into this and demonstrate again that you're just a better candidate right you're not just answering the think big question but let me demonstrate that i have customer obsession but but it was also from an executive communication standpoint demonstrating that the, the candidate understood that maybe I don't understand as the interviewer, I understand everything about what's going on and my uh, thought process might be, well, sure, if you're just taking what other pharmacies have and you slap it on a website as your informational, that, I mean, that seems reasonable. So it was understanding that the interviewer may not have a full context and understanding around what the solve was and, and why it was important and how it worked and how it was working for the customers. So he took the extra step to just add those four little extra words uh, to make it clear that they, they wanted to make it even easier, right? In this whole uh, difficult design process of meeting the customers where they expected to be met. Um, and then finally, when asked about the metric, uh, obviously candidate couldn't give up any metrics and that's totally fine. And that'll happen in interviews. If you ever get asked a metric or, or some number when you're in an interview, it's totally fine to say, listen, I can't divulge a metric, but it was obvious from the answer that they had research about what the market expectations were for a average performing pharmacy that was not using this process, that they had set their targets higher. So that's think big. Let's not just take the status quo, but let's think bigger than that and overperform. Uh, and then just the confidence of the answer of, did you exceed? Yes. It, it, there was just there was so much to love in this answer, and and I was really looking forward to making this video because I thought the candidate did a really really good job of showing what a great leader in a you know product leader looks like uh, when they sit down and they, they interview for a job, and this was just a great answer. On this particular uh, leadership principle, it was really a, just a great showing all around for this candidate. But uh, the, the feedback that would have been read into the room for this specific principle is as follows. What most impressed about this candidate with regard to Think Big is that the candidate did not settle on an obvious first order issue to highlight uh, prescription fulfillment as their complex uh, design problem, but rather the second order problem of meeting customers where they expected to be met in the marketplace, albeit in a newly designed process. This is the sort of thinking that really separates good thinkers from great, and the candidate had Think Big on full display in this answer block. The additional content around the framework for baseline main measure setting uh, and then ongoing process for continuous improvement around the metric was very well organized and clearly runs a t as a tight ship.